Hey, it's Shaves, and welcome to a special edition of AnyTube Digest, where we go over the best and not-so-best anime YouTube videos that came out this year, uh, 2019. Obviously, I haven't been doing this series for that whole year, so you can't really go through the whole whatever, but um, I've gone through a bunch of channels and selected some videos that I thought were really great and stand out, representing creators that had really good years overall, or just made content that was... Uh, pushed them in a, in a better direction. It was a, a very promising year for them. And also videos that I thought were very um, very much a misstep and uh, generally what I don't want to see Annie to go towards and, and kind of a representation of that, I suppose. I have only selected uh, five that I thought were the best and four that were not the best um, just because I wanted to be honest with myself um, and really care like yeah I really do have something to say about these particular videos these particular creators um so I apologize if I haven't uh if I don't mention you uh shout out to everybody who have you know who watches this series and, and talks about uh who makes content in general um because everyone's doing pretty cool stuff anyway so but this is just my opinion this is stuff I wanted to talk about and people are kind of expecting this too so you know <laughs> So we're going to start with one of the videos I thought were the best videos of the year, starting with What the What, uh, I Don't Like Annie Tube, classic. Uh, he started the year off with this, actually, uh, 20, in January, and um, the whole year afterwards, he kind of spoke to what he talked about in this video, which was making content that you care about and changing the conversation yourself instead of complaining that the conversation isn't what you want it to be or the the community is problematic or you know they're they're doing things hypocritically or the wrong way and and just complaining you know what i mean he documents his entire relationship with anime youtube as a fan then as a a but what do we call it? a sproutling i guess of uh of a creator when he just started out and it's very relatable when he's going through that talking about how he took from other creators and kind of became a pale, a pale imitation of them and he isn't proud of those videos um, and finding different pockets of the community and people reaching out to him and him his reaction to that and uh, embracing that community in that way um, and it kind of gradually goes over his whole journey of you know adoration to disillusionment to um realization or, you know catharsis and ultimately coming to the conclusion of like you know we're all here just trying to do our best and, and making content that we enjoy and we think other people would enjoy finding a, a, a reason to do this instead of just like oh that looks like that looks cool or um i want to do something like that it's it's beyond it kind of grows beyond that because we all start that way i think all of us do see the the videos and we're like that sounds cool i think i can do that and then it, you know we find our reason for doing it along the way um or we find our uh our niche of sorts and we find our audience too um we find that our group of people that like we like interacting with and uh like talking to and and giving you know giving us each other value and building each other up in that way so despite a very antagonistic looking title and um his past of uh of taking others down, taking an entire year um taking down digi um and being an antagonistic and drama filled he really makes this as a statement of like uh you know i've matured and um i'm looking to move past it and to to really make cool shit and I think he did that over the year, um, this year, although it doesn't necessarily stop him from having that occasional spat of drama and uh, tension with uh, other creators and other people who are fans of his and stuff like that, which, um, you know, what can you do, man? Sometimes it's in your blood and uh, it'd be like that. Um, I, I would just encourage, I would just encourage what the what that, um, it, even if that, that stuff does happen, you know, I think the, the story is still going, you know, you kind of made this as a statement of this is where I am, this is where I'm going as kind of a turning point, but it's still in itself a chapter in your, in this whole saga, I suppose. Uh, it's really great that you made this and yeah, it's, it's dated and there's like, there's people I say that I'm friends with in this video that I'm no longer friends with and blah 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 but that's just how that's life you know what i mean you're crystallizing your moment in time you're crystallizing where you were in january of 2019 um 
and you may be in a different place, but um, I think that just shows growth and it shows you, you have even more of a journey ahead of you. Um, so, I mean, I just take it as a sign of excitement, I suppose. But I really enjoyed it. It was very introspective, very professional, um, respectful for other people, too. Like, you didn't, you were able to keep it very watertight and um, it didn't, didn't start dwell, you know, dwelling into what are those hypocritical moments? What is the things you don't actually like about AnyTube? You say that you, you, you kind of gloss over them, but the reason you do that, I, I would imagine, is because that's not as much the point of this video. It's supposed to show what you value, what you saw value in, and why you are where you are now, and why you're making this video and everything. And, um, not so much of the, they said this in a video and it, it bad. This, here's why. You know what I mean? Uh, cause I mean, you spent that, you spent that entire year doing that with, uh, with, um, and you saw the value it gained. It, you, you just kind of grew very tired of it, I would imagine. And, um, I'm happy you're in, in a sort of place that I think is ultimately healthy, which is this, you need to be having the conversations that are positive and, um, additive to the community, um, and giving value, you know what I mean? Um, you can still be critical, obviously, but, uh, critical in a way that is constructive and not, uh, demeaning, you know what I mean? Speaking of demeaning, I'm going to talk about the first video I thought was not good, <laughs> and it's your boy, Scambully Reviews with, uh, I thought his Ava video arguably is kind of his biggest splash of, uh, bad, because, um, all of his other videos, I think there's there's general problems to his personality and um, his approach to this material, um, or just the community and the, the way he's describing these things. Um, but this is the one he put the most work in and uh, ultimately made, kind of made the biggest sort of splash. You just don't understand, Ava. Yeah. <laughs> it's very condescending and um, ultimately his most caustic and... Uh, abrasive kind of, of video but the other ones like even Haikyuu uh you know he's being very abrasive and and uh unfair and and very unpleasant in a positive review <laughs> um but at least all those other reviews that his other videos I've felt have at least been you know kind of harmless really annoying but this pushes Ava in a very unflattering light uh and before I, before I go on you're wondering uh, what's your take what's my do I think you're wrong about Ava? Well, um, it's not that I think you're wrong. It's that, uh, you're just, you're just not all that interesting about your opinion on Ava because you, you think you have this, this take, this flaming hot, you know, like, I don't, I didn't think it was good. Everyone thinks it's good. I didn't. Your, your opinion is not all that original in my opinion. <laughs> A lot of people don't like Ava. It's a very divisive show. Um, you either like it or you don't like it. And it was very strange that you painted Ava as this universally beloved classic, um, when there's plenty of people who agree with you and, and, um, have even more really irritating caustic to you. You, you guys need to have a drink with Ben at the Sage and you two would get along just fine. <laughs> and it's not that you need to have, you need to like Ava or you're wrong. And that's why I don't like this video. Absolutely not. But you need to have the respect to the material that you're talking about in order for me to give a fuck of what you're talking about. Otherwise, it's like, oh, he doesn't give a fuck. You're trying to make this point that it's still bad that Shinji is a is a wit, is a wuss, um, because, you know, that's not entertaining just because it makes sense. Just because these things, there's things in the show doesn't make it good, doesn't make it entertain, they'll make it, you found it really boring, you found it repetitive, uh, ironic because I found your video very repetitive and very boring. You make a lot of the same points. Um, you use a lot of the same kind of transitions and, uh, it, it feels like a, you're, you're kind of going through the motions and, uh, it doesn't feel like you're really trying to convince anyone, you know? And then it's like, well, why, why make the video if you're not trying to convince anyone of your argument, if you're making this argument, it's like, I don't care if you agree with me. Why the... <laughs> It's so dismissive. It's like be have some fucking conviction. Like actually go against some of these people that have actually read into Ava. You like you said like I googled Ava, why is Ava good? And you found some like forums and shit. Like 
There are people that have put way so much, way more effort, and you actually admire that. You talk about in your video that you admire that there's so many people that you can dig into Ava. Huh, maybe there is something there, but you don't care. You don't care. You know, it's, it's, you're trying to make this generalized point. And it was interesting. A lot of your points really reminded me of what I had problems with, with Red Revolutionary Gulatena. But the reason I'm not going to make that video is because it's not going to convince anyone who actually likes it. It's just going to piss them off. Was that your was that your goal? You just wanted to piss people off? I think it was because it's so condescending and uh, jokey and um, the reference you don't understand, Ava, you know, like the whole thing reeks of uh, dismissive and like you don't want to you don't want anyone to listen to you. Like, why? Like, I don't get it. Um, I mean, there's some people that would certainly would say otherwise and agree with you or um, found it entertaining or enlightening, but I just I just found it so irritating. Um, and you say you put so much effort into this video, but it's, I have to say, it's very sloppy, sloppily made. There's just um, a lot of non sequitur Minecraft footage where you don't know what to put there instead of, you know, Ava footage. <laughs> Uh, you just have a lot of this, like, the way, the rips that you got from the show have, like, the dub, like, duh, like, this, this watermark on top that you don't either crop out or you just get better footage. Or you have, like, a nine anime logo in the corner. And there's just stuff like that where it's, it's so sloppy and it doesn't feel like care was put into it, you know? Um, and it, it just bothers me as a, as a video creator too, where it's, you know, I really try to look for those things and uh and try to put effort in and um i mean i guess you put effort in because you you say it took a week to make this or something but um i i didn't uh i didn't think it was all that respectful oh by the way for anyone who hasn't watched this video he says that nobody dies in the show and he says that because he he did not watch the end of av galleon he didn't watch the rebuilds and see he's like why do i gotta watch six movies and move 22 video games to <laughs> And it's, I have the same problem with Utena. If you've ever seen Utena, if you're listening to this, it's Campbell. Um, Ikuhara, the director, has an entire commentary breaking down and he talks about what each symbol means and why he made these choices and people have read into it and they're just as much into Utena as they are Ava. But the show itself doesn't discuss that, right? It doesn't give that to you. Um, so it's like, why do I gotta have this outsider information to really appreciate the work itself. And I agree with that point. It's just the exaggeration of 22 video games and six movies when all you had to do was watch the one movie that's called <laughs> The End of Evangelion. <laughs> so far as it literally has like the episode cards, episode 25 and episode 26. Like these were the episodes, this was like what they were originally going to make when they ran out of time. And, it, and yeah, like there is a there's a level of incompetence to that. I agree uh, that it's like you really couldn't you couldn't stick the landing. So you did something else that you could do, but people still appreciate it anyway. Like I get you don't like it. So many people do. That's why I found it, I, this was originally I was like, oh, I bet this is the worst video of the year. And I watched it and I'm like, this is so boring in terms of um, everyone says this about Ava. <laughs> like this is this the the the, the very common counter art it was so strange that you didn't encounter that like you didn't it seemed that you were making these observations like very originally like oh no no one's ever talked about it <laughs> what do you mean guy you know i wasn't as infernally irritated by this video because uh i'm i like ava i i think it was cool i i enjoy it a lot but um i don't like oh it's so good you're just wrong i, I don't really I understand there's people who have frustrations with it, but those people who do love Ava and, and do care about it and uh, could very infernally disagree with you, they will probably hate this. But, you know, the worst part is that you're not going to listen to any of these people. So have a good year, I guess. I, the fourth video that I thought was the best of the year Technically three videos uh, over the span of the year by Mr. Core Reviews uh, and friend and friends. <laughs> uh, I'm not putting in this because I was in a section of this at one point, um, but I genuinely love this idea of uh, reviewing 
every an seasonal anime that came out in the year of 1989, uh, winter, spring, and summer, and uh, fall is being worked on uh, as we speak, and I'm looking forward to it. And, um, you know, enough support has happened, and, and I think Core likes it, that he'll probably be doing future years or kind of modding, uh, alternating the the format of this a little bit or whatever. But for what this was, I loved it. The idea of uh, taking a standard very tired uh, cis, uh, format of these other YouTubers just talking about the seasonals of this particular season and just rewinding the clock to the bringing it into the context that none of us have ever seen before. Because in 1989 in particular, yes, there are some shows that are a little classic, a little more popular, a little um, like that. And we have the hindsight of, oh yeah, this is a, a show that actually survived the, the length of time or whatever. Then there's completely random OVAs and specials and so stuff that wasn't even subbed um, that, that, that that aired that year that have that representation that would have never gotten representation otherwise. Um, and all of it, you know, not all of it is treated with as much respect as it as it could have, uh, <laughs> because a lot of this is isn't very good stuff. All that on all that honestly, but I think that the the, the effort enough to cover it. In the sake of this this particular framework, even if you, you're very you're being the whoever is talking, it's usually core, but it's also urban man mode myself whatever. It's sometimes you know sometimes it's not taken with as much respect as possible, but there's usually a reason for it, and it's not out of um, misinformation or caustic or um, trying to dissuade anyone from watching the show itself. It's giving it an honest impression. It's it's being uh, personal. Instead of being like, this is my review of this show, and is it is it uh, uh, cracked up to be? It's it's just a very casual, like, wow, I watched this thing, and God, I didn't like it, or whatever. And um, I think that's a better frame of mind to go into it, rather than some out of some obligation and some moral duty to, like, give the definitive video on, on this OVA or whatever, and... Um, because if you do, if you want to do that, you need to give it respect. You need to give it the research and actual paying attention. Um, you can't be like, oh, I, I fell asleep. <laughs> I watched it maybe once or whatever. Um, we're just giving our impressions. And um, I, I think they're very entertaining. And uh, I love the collaborative atmosphere to it. Um, bouncing around different creators or having their own sections. Um it gives so much variety and again um content that wouldn't have other, wouldn't have been shown otherwise because it's like oh yeah great another video on my hero academia <laughs> um but now it's just like wait what is this fucking uh fucking akamaku and cinderella express uh i'm just talking about the ones i i was i watched but um you know giving giving the their take on that and um you know, it gives an opportunity for the for us, so the people who are um, making the, this video, to to um, watch stuff we wouldn't have watched otherwise. Um, not just recover on YouTube that we wouldn't have covered otherwise. You know, um, I'm really happy I was able to find uh, um, Boku wa Son Goku um, by Rintaro. Uh, that was a really interesting OVA, and I wouldn't have had a prior the priority wouldn't have been there otherwise. So um, I loved that and. Uh, yeah, it was really cool. I'm looking forward to fall. Looking forward to uh, more from this year. Good shit. It's a few days later, and me in the future realized how terribly I botched this uh, next video that I thought was not good. No, no, no. It is from an explanation point on his uh, what anime should you watch in summer 2019. And I did cover this in my first uh, digest and in more detail. Um... But I don't think in my initial recording I really articulated the difference between this video and Core's 1989 series because they're effectively very similar. And I unintentionally drew lots of similarities but didn't really articulate what the problem is with one of them and with the other because they seem very identical. It, what is it? I just, one of them is my friend and the other one isn't? Uh, this is just I don't like Explanation Point's editing style and I like cores or what is it? I didn't have a problem with what Explanation Point was doing in this video because so many people do. It's just the way that he did it and the, the myriad of things that I don't think any YouTuber should do 
<laughs> and I think I said it in my initial video, this is like a, a textbook lesson just how much, what, what you should not do. He opens the video saying that he's rushing this video out while he's in the middle of moving and he's like, and he contextualizes the whole thing as, oh, I'm, I'm going to be doing this in a rush. And it's like, so you're not going to put that much effort or attention in, into this. So there's going to be some cracks, huh? And it's like, why don't you cut that stuff that doesn't work or makes you look like a complete idiot, uh, in my opinion. Um, just cut those series out. But he has to sh cover all of them. And he just does it so sloppily. It's like, you can cover all of them. Just do it in, in a competent way. I wasn't a fan that he gave a very uh, clear, objective sort of rating system uh, at the end of each of his reviews. He just gives the show a watch, which is like a yes, go ahead, test, just some weird gray area I don't really understand, and then just skip, fuck this show kind of deal. And um, I'm happy that Core doesn't doesn't have that sort of ambiguity. He just gives you the, the their personal impression while showing you the actual show. That's kind of another thing with, that I have a problem with explanation points thing in general is just he doesn't give examples of the show itself. The only one he did in this video that I can remember really was when he was talking about Omaidens because he was actually getting screen caps and showing you the screen caps of what he's talking about because he actually genuinely gives a shit about that show. And you can tell the other ones he didn't. So it's like, of course, he's not going to get screen caps for this. He's not going to really put that kind of effort in. And it's just so disrespectful in that way, I think. Like, you're not even going to bother to get examples of what you're talking about. If there is any examples to even cite, because he says stuff like, there's... There was one of his shows where he just says, there's stuff here, kind of interesting stuff. If you like, you know, stuff, I guess, but it's not going to make any best of lists. Does it give any, any indication of what he's talking about? He doesn't spend more than a minute on almost any of these shows. I think he did one, and that was the Fire Force one because he had this hilarious tangent, which I recreate in uh, wonderful detail in the first digest. But he doesn't even spend 30 seconds in, on some of these entries. There's one entry that he shows you a clip that's out of context, that's like less than 10 seconds, and then just no, no other further commentary, no other, skip, worse rating. Because it's like, oh, it's an isekai, uh -huh. And it, the guy's like, I must have been transported to an RPG, like fantasy, and he just says skip, as if he, you get it. Complete disrespect. You know, you don't have to like the show. You can clown on it. All you want, but don't do that. <laughs> it just doesn't give the audience anything to grab onto, and it it's so disrespectful to the people who make that who made that show. You know, at least show the the, the fucking work. You know what I mean? At least like give pay some fucking attention. I guess this one clip: uh, Astra Lost in Space seems like a worse Infinite Revius, even though I haven't seen Infinite Revius. Go watch Infinite Revius instead of spending your time on this then, please. It's a good show. Fuck. And there's this one show where he says one thing and then it cuts to black and it's like, hi, Brian from two episodes later. Uh, no, it, it, we're just contradicting it. Literally like contradicting what he said, just said and keeping it in there saying, oh, I'm keeping this in here as like a, a clap. Why? Re-record it! What is wrong with you? I couldn't believe it. I'm re-recording right now because I said some dumb shit. There's no excuse. No excuse. This shit's gonna be... This stuff's gonna be on your channel for years if you if YouTube's still here. Or if you delete them or whatever. But, like, this is... Rep you're representing yourself here. And giving yourself your reputation. And if someone wants to take you seriously and they find this or someone brings this up, if you get somehow bigger or whatever, and then they pull this up from a couple of years ago, be like, wow, this guy's a... <laughs> and you're going to, you know, they'll have canceled whatever and we're dealing with that. But like, why would you do this? It's like, it just doesn't make sense to me. There's so much where he's often prioritizing making jokes than to actually talk about the show. Um... He says at one point, there's nothing wrong with liking this sort of thing. He's talking about harems. I go hard on making fun of it for comedic effects because I'm basically a professional entertainer. 
<laughs> well, thank God you're self-employed. Anyway, there's so much more I can, you can cite from this. It's a 30-minute video, just so much incompetence. It's just so infuriating. And um, from there, it's about that, about this point that I can return to my old self and um, keep talking about it. So, point made. It's under this. It gives us the impression of no matter what I say, even if it, you know, it's going to be valuable. It doesn't matter how actually valuable you know it's, it's like but it comes from me so that's what people care about um it doesn't matter if i if what i say is very dismissive or uh caustic or whatever it doesn't matter uh it's because i said it and if i said it that means it's important <laughs> it's not how it works not how it should work but uh, out of these videos i thought were not good this one i thought was the most irritating i remember pausing so often to just like rage and <laughs> just just like just silently rage to myself like how can you fucking say that <laughs> uh or just just be so freaking uh pissed off at just the um at the conceit i guess um but i will i will admit um towards the latter end of the year uh, you did this one frame analysis video that I thought was really interesting. And then just recently, you made kind of a response video to your fans, um, sort of kind of clapping back at the people who were like, you're overanalyzing this one frame, uh, you know, and like, you can't possibly mean all that, you know, basically as a kind of refuting of the criticism wherever there was uh, in that one frame analysis. Um and I thought that was a very solid rebuttal. And um, there was some things I that was there was one or two things that I, I wasn't fully on board with. But like, I I thought it was otherwise a really cohesive video, and it shows that you're kind of going in a more mature, positive uh, direction. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to more content uh, to either roast you on or uh, to praise you on. I think you're I don't know a mixed bag uh, content creator where. Uh, at least I'll have something to say about, you know, at least I have something to talk about instead of these, these videos. I felt, I felt nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least I feel, I feel, at least, um, at least you're an interesting creator to, to watch, um, make content with. So, so, uh, looking forward to more good, best of luck for you. One more thing. Um, you know, like he's doing this for his patrons and stuff. And this is the kind of thing that he's using his patrons like he he includes them in his videos and <laughs> that's one of his patrons that guy's paying like 30 something dollars <laughs> to be like that maybe he that was his idea and he's like oh it's funny maybe it, that's completely consensual but yeah third best video I thought was amazing i wish i was able to talk about it it's from a new creator that um had such a splash not necessarily a number splash, but like a splash in my heart. Uh, <laughs> Marion B, her attack number one video in particular, um, which I loved, uh, it has everything that I think Marion B is, is bringing to the table with her channel in general, uh, covering media that no one else is talking about in a very fair, but overall positive, engrossing, entertaining fashion. I'm really excited to watch attack number one. Uh, and I love how much you've been able to cover it in it. The way you covered it wasn't so much of a story characters plot, whatever, whatever. Uh, it felt kind of going on a journey of sorts and more of a little rambly of sorts. Um, but it, it was still, it wasn't predictable in that way. It didn't feel like you were going through the motions of, oh, this is a show, right? It, it felt you were really trying to present this show that isn't as popular, barely popular, um, but something you're really excited about, genuinely passionate about sharing with people that, you know, showing people these clips of, of the show and these moments and, and sharing that with people that wouldn't have otherwise seen them because it's in a hundred episode show from the seventies. And again, being fair and like talking about, well, that wasn't, uh, well handled. <laughs> and, um, I think it's really, I find that really tough actually, um, as a, as a creator, or just generally as a fan, um, to really point out and um, discuss the things that I thought didn't, that you thought didn't work.
in a show while still being like, but I love it. It's great. It's fucking sick. Uh, number one volleyball anime. Uh, yeah, man. I'm so looking forward to more content from you um, and, and covering more stuff. Uh, your Magical Girl video is also incredible, um, but you're improving with every video. Uh, I love the things that you do with reaction faces, and uh, because it's because it's subtle and it's not relying on the on the reaction face. It's it's supplementary. Uh, I don't know if you watched um, my formats video, my my day nine of Dazaki, but I did a little bit, you know, in a homage to that. I've been I'm slowly I'm I'm. I'm feeling that influence in, in a way. Um, that's always really cool when it's when you feel like the content is um, influencing you as a creator to do better. And there's a we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's really exciting, really promising. Everyone watched uh, the tech number. This is a tech number one video. I love it. I would say yeah, it's her. I would say it's my favorite video of hers this year, and uh, I am very much excited looking forward to more please keep it up now for the second most video that i thought was not good so i love bob samurai uh i was a big fan of his uh in the suit era in the green screen era yeah <laughs> uh when he was just making such consistent content and uh embracing and and watching these classics and uh and really giving them their due and it was so exciting to watch um giving themed months and putting so much effort in and everything um and i remember there was so there was sort of a hiccup around certain points and then he he started to go sort of disillusioned and um he really backed off and um slowed down he still makes good content every so now every every so often and it's not as uh concentrated and high effort as those other videos were um but that's okay. Um, I do like him as a, as a creator anyway. Um, but it is tough to see, uh, when he's being a little more cynical, uh, and, uh, a little toxic in a way and very dismissive of certain genres. Last year, he made a video about slice of life anime and why he doesn't like it. <laughs> don't, don't watch that video. Cause it's, uh, well, you could, if you want for sure. And just, you know, understand where he's coming from but uh needless to say he really doesn't like the whole reactionary faces anymore the cute cartoony cutesy he doesn't like kids in his anime and it's really dis discouraging and disappointing to see that um as someone who loves ojimata dormi you know it's like you just haven't found the right one man but this video man is so trash dude i'm sorry first of all it's literally a reaction video and he's saying this stuff off the cuff and i i stay so we we're saying a bunch of us saying stuff off the cuff right but you're there are parts that you leave in your video that you're watching the thing and you have no reaction it's it's literally the thing that we were making fun of jinx for in like 2016 of these reaction channels that don't have reactions to them and it's it's don't make that shit it don't i don't know it's it was just so weird to see compared to what you've done and what you've made in the past and I know what you're capable of um it was so disrespectful and uh cringy to be honest um you know predicting uh certain things and then revel relishing in that like he says one thing he predicts one thing that he's like oh I bet this happened he said he says a few predictive things and he's I bet this happens and he repeats it like several times that he he like reinserts the clip like i bet this happens and he said he does it multiple times and it's it's like it's, it, i i found it really obnoxious and um not all that like sharp like aha i've predicted the the anime <laughs> like I, predictability to me um isn't so much of a sin as uh dismissive and um not paying that much attention or or, or care you know what i mean like you're not you're not really concentrating on it i guess the thumbnail is so awful dude like it's it's gross like this it's one thing to like edit anime clips or, or just the, the you know edit it in a way that is unflattering but i think it's another to just literally make it gross like disgusting i don't know what you're making man uh and it's it's really discouraging
thankfully he didn't really make anything like the like this wasn't really emblematic of his uh the rest of his content the rest of the year but it does sort of go into the uh you know he's making a little lesser effort in in it i suppose um but it was just such a low it was like a is has my has my content reached a new low like literally like kind of deal and it was like oh man um but i still really like him and i and i'm i enjoy his content and uh but this was a real big L, really big L, and uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't subscribe to it really. I don't like kid, kids anime, but it's like, don't watch it. That it's like, you knew, you knew. It's, you just trust. It's so weird that you like you trusted people. Like, what should I watch? And people give you the show, and you look at the trailer, and you're like, I don't think I'll like that. And you watch it anyway, and you give a first reaction and everything. It's like, what are you doing? Don't, don't post that. Like, it's just a waste of time. Like, drop it. You know, it's, I don't, it's just the lack of self, it shows a lack of self-control. And it's like, it's just immaturity. It's, for a 34-year-old guy, you pride yourself on being an older guy. And it's like, what the fuck does age have to do with it? It's like, I, we're all adults here. It doesn't matter if we're 25 or whatever. And like, there's people older than you that I would imagine or if you show them this stuff, it's like, oh, that's cute, or that was really fun, or that was interesting, or whatever. Like, you're not like a a, a, a monolith of old people, <laughs> of old anime fans. Like, fucking look at, like, Mike Tool, like, given, you know, giving, um, he became Euphonium and these other, these other shows, they're, they're fair credit, they're fair shot. Like, oh no, I've watched 700 anime, guys. Did you know I watched over 700, almost 800 anime? I, I, I'm getting cynical and it's, come on, man, find it, get good, <laughs> rewatch, rewatch shit that you like then, fuck me, right, like, I don't get it, I don't get the cynicism, beats me, have a good year, second best video of the year, probably the best video that I reviewed at the time of 82 Digest, that little stint, uh, our English dub centering anime from Cartoon Cipher. This is really impressive stuff. This is really um, cool to see a creator really have their whole manifesto, uh, or a duo, of course, really. But like both of them at the top of their game in narration, in editing, in clip selection, in research, in examples, in flow. Um, this is their best shit, I think. Um, they might have other things that they're proud of this year. They started doing uh, some uh, interviews with real industry people and talking to those people. And that was that was really cool. And have, what a great opportunity for them. Um, as well as uh, starting to make sort of weekly content. Although they, they stopped, they, they kind of let off the gas on that one. Um, which, you know, fair, whatever. But it was a stint. It was a, it was a period and there was something they were trying. And uh, I appreciated that. Um, but they've just been more active and, um, I low key think they realize, like, I remember their, their output was very consistent. And then when they dropped this video, it, it kind of petered a little bit where, it, cause I think they realized it's just, just that good. And then we're like, well, shit, we just said everything that we, um, are observing and have, have, uh, researched and everything. Uh, it was everything in this video. I would, I would think. And you really cut to the heart of the issue of people who are against English dubs and um, the hypocrisy and the uh, the attitudes of these people. And it, you just get it so con concisely and entertainingly, too. Like, it, it's such a, a fun video. It's so cool. I loved it. Um, and I've already had my, uh, my other review of this, and it probably echoes the same sentiment, really. Um, but... It's really cool to see a creator on the top, the creators on the top of their game. And I'm looking forward to what the next year brings. If that means some genuine industry stuff, like, you know, interviews are cool. But when we get into the next level, we're getting the insider, insider, you know, going to these studios and really going the whole process and what their, their thought process is. I mean, interviews could probably suffice for that. But like, you know, really getting into there, you know, and, and really getting on the history of this stuff. Um... I'm really looking forward to what you can, what you two cook up with, and um, best of luck to you. Really good shit. Nice job. And what I thought was the worst video of the year. The video I thought was not good.
technically it doesn't exist anymore. That's from good old Jerry Freeman. Uh, his openly, his fucking meme video of Kyoani disaster, uh, literally making fun of it. You don't do that. That is disgusting. That is repugnant. You're an idiot. <laughs> and I think you know that because you took the video down very promptly and offered an apology, not really an apology. Took that down, just kind of moved on. Hasn't really made too much videos after that. I think he kind of got the idea that he said, oh, maybe I'm making a fucking mistake. Fucking mistake. <laughs> Bad idea. Literally making fun of a fucking tragedy to kill 30 fucking people. You absolute buffoon. Um, that's technically the worst video of the year, hands down. But why don't we give it to a video that does still exist? Uh, which is also for, <laughs> and I may as, you know. Um, so what else did Jerry make? Uh, well, he made this Why Does Any Tube Suck video about Kobayashi, Konosuba, and corrupt standards. Um, I, you know, I watched this video again, and I couldn't tell you the first thing wrong with it. I think the thing that strikes out to me the most is how utterly useless and nothing, like a big numb, who cares, <laughs> kind of thing. Like, his problem with anime YouTube wasn't the misinformation, wasn't the, uh, anything that What the What might find problem with or what anyone would typically find a problem with. He has a problem that nobody's called out Kobayashi's Dragon Maid for having lolly rape. Why hasn't anyone, hmm... Everyone's praising the show, but they don't talk about this one scene in this one episode. Hmm. I was just shitting on Konosuba for like two minutes. <laughs> it's like, I didn't like Konosuba. <laughs> it's like, but AnyTube did, and that's why it sucks. <laughs> it's like, oh boy. You make, you're really making these other guys who do have problems with anime YouTube just like look like complete fools, huh? Like this is what they rep that's who their representatives are, these people like this. <laughs> I think the real problem is that he just admits in the video, you know, I I I I think the problem is I I don't actually like anime that much. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing on YouTube? What are you making videos for? What do you have all these pictures saved on your computer? as reaction images for if you're not, if you don't even like it in the first place. Like, it's the lack of, pa it's the admitted, it's literally admitting an absence of passion. <laughs> like, I don't give a shit. And it's like, if you don't give a shit, what's the, fir where on earth are we gonna find the energy to give a shit about you? And, and like, listen to you. I don't get it. Um, it's so baffling. I don't know why people would would bother to get in get in their seat, record on a mic, buy a microphone, record into that microphone, edit the audio so there's no ums of, you know, like like decent odd like he he didn't he seemed to have kind of polished audio. <laughs> why why would you download the episode the footage? of this scene that you're talking about that's so problematic and then edit it together and get to go frame by, so, you know, <laughs> you're staring at the thing that you hate. How does it feel? How does it fucking feel, dude? Does it feel bad? You gonna cry? You idiot. <laughs> Absolute egg on your face. If this is veering into bullying, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't understand. It's, it's so, it's so strange. I don't understand. And like you put Digibro, Garnt, and and Glass Reflection on this thumbnail as if you have something to say to those creators. I don't think you mention them by name. I don't think you call out anything they did. And granted, what the what didn't either. But that was the point. It, 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 that stuff is irrefutable in comparison to what you're gonna do about it. What are you gonna do? What are you doing right now?
look at you. Put a mirror up to yourself, you know? And it's like, oh shit. <laughs> what am I doing? You know, maybe, maybe you'll figure it out and you'll turn it around, you know? There's a redemption arc here. I can feel it. Uh, I know what the what had a had a redemption arc, and then he, you know, landed, he netted a video, got a million views. That's pretty cool. Uh, and he's getting some success. He, he ended the he started the year with about 3,000 subscribers, as according with his anti-tube video, and he ended the year with 22,000 subscribers. That's sick. That's growth. That's really exciting. And um, good for him. I think there's other people that do way better breakdowns of this video than I do. I think Roger Smith, and uh, he made a, a video uh, commenting on this. I don't know if I'm going to put it in the description. I'm sorry, Raj. Uh, <laughs> it's so sad that the videos like this kind of exist. Um, and there's more. That Jerry's not the only one. He's a tip of the eye. You know, he, that was, this was probably, he says, I don't usually do this. And he probably felt passionate enough to do it, you know what I mean? Even though it's literally the absence of negative passion, which I suppose, in a way, could be a, a, a way of saying, oh, it's positive passion, right? Interesting. Clowning on this video, uh, you know, I thought it would do more for me, but I'm just tired. You know, it's, that's actually not worth, you know. But people were expecting me to say, the, to talk about the worst videos, um, so I did it. Um... But I gotta admit, it doesn't do enough for it. Doesn't do it as much for me. Uh, maybe because I didn't take any notes. I don't think this was worth taking any notes for, though. That would show that I care. And I don't know how much of I. I don't know. I don't know how much I care about this particular video. It's not good. And the best video of the year. I mean, if if you're in my sphere, if you're in the 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 no. In the in, there's only one answer. There's only one. And he knows it. Everyone else knows it. And he's waiting for it. And I'm going to prolong it as long as possible. So he just itches. <laughs> please, please say it. The point of SSSS Gridman is the anime YouTube video of the year. And it's no fucking contest. Because it pushes all of us to do better. You know, it got, it, you know, the, the influence that the Mammoth has with Best Guy Ever and, and he looks up to him and everything and, and embodies him in some ways. The fact that he made something so fucking dope that the man that he looked up to had to look up to him in the like, holy shit, I hope I can join you in that echelon soon. I hope I can make something that dope. Because he, because it's true. Nate hasn't made the video like that in a while. When we all know he's capable of it. Sorry, this is now about Nate. <laughs> he did it, you know? And what was also cool, like, what kind of impresses me about this, so I realized in re-watching this video, um, this was made in May, and the show wrapped up in uh, December, right? Um, so he effectively, the man only took about five months to make this fucking masterpiece. It didn't even, it wasn't even years of, um, of toil. It was a couple months of fucking badass whatever in re-watching the video and in co our conversations since i've since um i'm very proud to say that i've become pretty good friends with him i think um and it, it makes me really happy um but in uh in so doing that you know listening to him and, and all that stuff i get more into his hit space of how he's consuming this stuff and um i think he with crit man he really found a breakthrough of how he can critically dissect and dig into a show and he realized i think he realized that and so with this newfound power and this this format that he established for himself he's gonna now be able to talk about the show it shows that he's always loved i don't know if he's ever gonna make that girl lager video maybe because he i don't know maybe because he thinks uh, uh nate ended up making that video already but um you know he's looking to make that for video for shows that he do think he does think are the there are nines like that was the the coolest thing is that with the Gridman video is that you know this is a show that he thought was a three out of ten and became just an eight out of ten. The fact that there's a nine and a ten that exist right that there's a there's a even further beyond plus oh I'm sorry it's just really promising and I'm looking forward to uh to hearing that the experiencing that more but 
I, you know, as good as those videos are definitely going to be, uh, and maybe he's, maybe, I'm sorry if I psych you out about this, but I don't think anything's going to top this particular video in terms of what it meant for you uh, as a creator and for all of us, because it was such a, a shining uh, breakout moment. And um, it's really true. Like none, nobody, nobody else in the platform, in my opinion, really pushed themselves uh, to where um, they made something better than themselves and um, greater than far greater than anything they've made before. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't like a, a new level. Um, Cartoon Cypher, it's their their video on du this censoring anime dubs. It was the best that they were capable of that we all knew they were. That like they just matched it. They just brought it to hundred. But you were at one level and broke the ceiling and then broke the ceiling after that. They were like, oh yeah, great. He he actually made the good content. But but then they broke the 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 expectation of well, <laughs> you can make videos like this? You can edit videos like this? You can just put an AMV in the middle of your video and it, it, it flows fine? What? Uh, uh, um, and it, it stunned everybody. And I, th I don't think anyone has um, dared to challenge that yet. I'm looking, I'm hoping somebody, you know, I'm, you know, I'm considering it because <laughs> I, you know, watching this video, especially again today, it's just fills me with supreme jealousy of just, uh, fuck, like how, why am I so awkward to, to talk like this in, in the way, that, uh, why can't I do that? Right. And you just have to soul search. <laughs> Never mind the, the content of the video itself, where, um, not only are you justifying the show and it's, almost all of its decisions, even the decisions that you admit don't necessarily tickle your fancy. Like, you know, I wish the, the, the town in the show was a little more lively, but he perfectly validates why that is, you know, and in giving concrete reasoning for everything. And then it's all a matter of, you know, whether you vibe with that or not. And um, he makes a perfect argument of why he, why he particularly vibes with it, because um, of how important he sees the Gynax soul and how much he sees the Gynax soul in this particular show and uh, giving a fuller understanding of what man mode is, you know, is SS Squid Man man mode. Yes. And, and you give that as a whole reason for it. The cameos of these other, of these other creators that are in our discord and stuff, it felt so familial and like they they were sort of supporting you in that way. I think, and, and honestly, like, I just wasn't, uh, present in that, in that group, uh, at that time from, like, October to May, um, because I was in the AmeriCorps and all that, and I just wasn't in Discord, uh, and that's one of my regrets of this, this year, really, was just, man, I wish I was there, um, to support you in this endeavor in that way, because I, I can't imagine your thought process going in, in making this video, um, as you were chilling with these guys, like, I, I bet that was fucking magical, and I wish I was there. Fuck. <laughs> but again, you know, it's not to intimidate you if you can't make anything like this ever again, but it really is, it, it's going to mean something to you differently than the other sh videos that you might be even more proud of because you finally were able to articulate your, pre your love and appreciation and um, your ethos uh, in the shows that do rep that do really represent you, um, and I think that's really exciting. And I hope you get on that soon. I know you've been um, you've been doing these collabs and stuff. It makes you want to die, but <laughs> and then also getting super like like oh man, I found this other media and stuff like that, and want to watch that and whatever. Uh, I apologize for consistently presenting you with things that you haven't seen before and be like shit. What's this? Uh, it, but it, it fills me with joy anyway, so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it just makes me want to step up. It makes every... I think all of us want to step up in that way. It was like, well, fuck. <laughs> um, I want to have that moment of glory or that, that pride in, in making something. And uh, it doesn't take away anything that you've had and the success you've had this year. You've barely uploaded anything else. Like, you didn't have, like, a prolific year. You didn't have, like, a Nuxtaku kind of year, right? 
Um, it was really just this and a couple other, you know, whatever that you, you just kind of dropped as a little, little whatevers. Um, as well as your entry in, and specifically Summer 89 was phenomenal, but it, it really is showing that you've you've unlocked this part of your brain that, <laughs> or maybe it was always there. I, I'm just, I'm just cluing into it now. I'm just, I'm just getting it now, you know? Um, and that's fair. And I'll take that L and I'll hold that L. Um, gladly. One last thing I will I'll also say is this, like, you, as much as any of these other creators that I, I've been giving the not good videos to, all of them, I would say, the reason they're in where they are is out of a place of cynicism and dis disrespect to the content. And you are a really good example for them that they should learn from, because you have that very biting, cutting, abrasive edge of uh, not being afraid. Like, that sucked. <laughs> it's like, this is bad. Um, and uh, the, the same sort of biting criticism that these guys have. But you, ha but you also demonstrate the passion and the knowledge and the care. Fucking give a shit. And you show that. You never leave until the audience knows that. You know, you never let that cynicism define you. You don't let that be your ethos. Um, because your ethos is so much more stronger than that and so much more inclusive. Like, all of us can relate to this. You know, like, I feel like cynicism and negativity in this caliber is in itself isolating. Um, you kind of relegate back to yourself and, and you're like, am I alone? in my opinion on this? Am I inspiring other people? Uh, am I creating a sense of awareness? Um, am I encouraging people to do better, to be better versions of themselves? Um, am I doing this out of love? You have to have that. Otherwise, it's vapid and soulless and irritating and often very boring. <laughs> to me at least it's just so numb exactly you know so uh congratulate you know i can I, I i just wanted to give your your video it's due really um it puts way more than i can speak on i could be pointing out little things like oh i liked what you did here and here but it, it's so much more than that i think it's it's a representation of what we as a community need to strive for um while embracing that that side of all of us, I, I have as much of a cynical uh, perspective on some stuff as these other guys. But it's a matter of how you harness that and uh, channel that energy um, into something. I don't expect you to ever really talk about stuff that you don't like um, without it being accompanied by something you do. But hey, congratulations on such a success. Um, boy, do I hope, uh, that all of us can step up the way you have, and that just makes anime YouTube that much better. Uh, this is what it's about. This is, uh, what, we're, this is the, this is the spice. This is what they call it, chief. And I hope that does it for you, that, that uh, gives you your, your fix that y'all have been, uh, starving for the past month or so, as I've been, uh, laboring at my 12 Days of Dazaki series, which... Uh, is wrapped up by now. Almost. And I hope you guys had a very good year uh, and a good decade. And uh, looking forward to the next one. This is a really... I, I'm happy that I'm recording and publishing content like this at the end of the, at the end slash beginning of a decade so that I can look at this 10 years from now when I'm 35 fuck. <laughs> um, and look at this, like, oh, stupid kid. Ah, oh, at least he's, at least he's spunky. He, he likes what he's doing. Good for him. Hey, I see you, future person. Maybe I don't. Yikes. Have a good year. Have a good decade. I'll see you in January. Yo, peace.